Hello, my name is Ernie Power and I'm an engineer with Clearfield. Today we're going to be going over splicing and fiber routing in the Clearview Classic cassette. As with any fiber optic procedure, safety first, we want to put on our safety glasses. Each Clearview cassette comes shipped to you configured with a left exit. Left exit meaning when, rear, when viewing the cassette from the rear, the cable exits the left. It is, however, capable of handling both left and right exits. The first thing to do when you receive your cassette is remove the captive fasteners from the side and set those to the side. The cover of the cassette is removed simply by inserting your fingers at the arrows on the front till the lid slightly lifts and then pulling it up and away. Once again, you can set this to the side and for later use. Inside the cassette, you'll find that your fiber has already been pre-routed into the splice tray. You can access that splice tray by simply pulling on the tabs of the clear splice tray cover and lifting away. It will set that to the side as well. As I had said before, the cassette can be utilized for either a right or a left exit. We'll be addressing the left exit first as that is the way it is currently shipped to you. Once you have pre-prepped and marked your buffer tube per the installation manual, remove the boot from the cassette and slide it onto the buffer tube as shown. You want to slide it just past the mark that's on your cable so that you can prep that for splicing. Using a clothespin tool or other appropriate device, remove the buffer tube at the mark, exposing the 250 micron glass inside for splicing. Using lacing cord or a zip tie, secure the buffer tube to the splice tray as shown. I've used a little bit of padded tape to help protect the buffer tube. Then at that point you will also insert the boot back into the cassette. Next remove the stored 250 micron fiber from the cassette and exit the cassette. You will have the 250 micron fiber from your buffer tube exiting the opposite direction. This will naturally allow the fibers to store into the splice sleeve. Here I have completed the splice on the blue fiber using a recommended 60 millimeter splice sleeve. I can then store it into the splice tray as shown. A little bit of silicone can be used to help adhere the splice sleeves to the tray if desired. Now that the splices have been completed and the splice sleeves stored in the tray, we'll go ahead and store the slack in the tray. Simply take the 250 micron bundle and wrap it underneath the provided restraints. Here you can see that the incoming fiber has all been slack stored. Now simply repeat on the other side. Here you can see all the fiber is properly stored in the splice tray. We can now reinstall the splice tray cover and cassette cover. Install the splice tray cover by inserting the cover under the tabs, lowering onto the posts, and pushing into place. Install the cassette cover in the same fashion by inserting the back of the cover in first and then snapping the two latches at the arrows into the front as shown. When splicing a right exit cassette, the process is very similar. We still tie onto the cassette right behind the mark. We still insert the boot. The only difference is when we store our slack, we bring the 250 micron in an S pattern as so before we start doing our loops. So the incoming fiber is still stored over the logo side of the cassette, but in order to get there, I'm required to do a little redirect. Here is the fully stored incoming fiber in the Clearview cassette using the redirect. As you can see, the fiber makes a little S, goes into its standard coil, and into the splice leaves. Now we'll just need to store the existing fiber on the other side, and we'll be done. As you can see, the fiber is all safely and properly stored in the Clearview cassette. It is now ready for installation in the proper FieldSmart products. Thank you for joining me in today's instruction on splicing and fiber management inside the Clearview Classic cassette for a loose tube cable.